Welcome back, everyone, to Lobster Roll Series Week 3. We're in the winner's semifinals. We're going to have Randy versus Steel Blue. And unfortunately, I had to miss the first part of the game because OBS crashed. Because, I don't know, actually, it's never happened before. It's actually never happened before. I have no idea why OBS just crashed. But let's continue. So we have Randy going for Hovercraft and Steel Blue going for Tanks. It'll be interesting. Everyone says Hovercraft or Tanks OP, and then Hovercraft also has Bolas, which we're often considered to be possibly overtuned. And Randy going heavy on the Bolas, too. Steel Blue is. I mean, they're playing tanks, you know. Get a welder, get some. Get the command around the map. Build stuff, get as much metal as possible. Randy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Randy building a bit faster than that. Anyway. Randy building a bit faster than that does have the... It does have the advantage of having slightly cheaper constructors. Actually... Well, not slightly. They're... Well, yeah, they're about half cost. It's just not slightly. It's pretty significantly cheaper constructors. I mean, granted, they also have to... They also don't have defenses, but... Well, that's what the boluses are for. Randy managing to take full advantage of their position right now. And making sure to get the power up. Steel Blue, on the other hand, they're fine for the power, but they're really struggling when it comes to anything else. And getting their metal economy up is not... Working out so far. Randy. Now the commander. As forward as it should be. Steel Blue on the other hand being very defensive with their commander. Which I find surprising. It is a... I mean it's a strike commander too. So you'd think it would be more in front. It's also been upgraded. Yeah, right cannon and armor. This is, this is a front line commander. I don't know why I was heading out and back. Fortunately for Steel Blue, they just lost a welder to all the boluses. No way of stopping that. And a nice kill from Randy. As always, building or getting rid of constructors is a key part of getting ahead in this game. Steel Blue needs to rebuild, get more metal extractors. That's the biggest thing right now. They are way behind economically and playing as tanks. They absolutely need more metal extractors than their opponent. Like, that is tank's big weakness. Their units are individually very expensive. And Randy taking advantage of that fact, because individually expensive units means fewer units, which means you, that whoever's fighting them can flank more easily. And that's exactly what Randy is doing, which has been spotted. Their radar has spotted the bulls as they're coming around the bottom. Not sure Steel Blue has noticed that. But it will be a problem very shortly. Oh, bosses. Have they broken a, a hole? Not quite, no. The ones in the back, however, are dealing a bit of damage. Oh, not quite getting rid of the metal extractor. That is a shame. Might be able to deal with... No, the blitzes have got them. That attack did not manage to do too much. But more importantly, Randy is just keeping pressure on Steel Blue. Like, Steel Blue hasn't been expanding very quickly. They're a little afraid to expand. Randy, on the other hand, has been expanding rapidly... And it's pretty much taken a good half of the map so far. Steel Blue, they are... They're, it doesn't look like they're entirely sure where they can expand. And instead of going for a counterattack, hitting Randy's forces head-on, but Randy just regrouping everything in preparation for that attack. Steel Blue, I'm not sure where they're going to have an opportunity to actually get in here. Might be a thing they could do if they get in with... No, never mind. The bulls won't be able to. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's tough. Stibble's commander instead. That's what's being attacked. Not working out though. The forces coming in to deal with it are making it. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Stibble's commander has too many support forces around. What was that? Five bulls has lost. Steel blue thus far ahead, attrition wise, actually, not by much. By four hundred metal. Randy's economy advantage is still way ahead of that, but 
still, it's something. Not to mention all the reclaim. The only thing is that Steel Blue doesn't have a lot of energy to work with. So, get a few more power structures, and then the reclaim will be extremely useful. Randy looking to come in here with some scalpels. They might be able to find... Yeah, they should be able to get rid of the blitzes, but it's just... Steel Blue, the main problem, of course, is their economy. And also their lack of energy structures. Because they haven't got any energy structures, and they've got a lot of builders that are around the map that aren't building energy structures, or even metal extractors, for that matter. Like, they'd be fine with all the reclaim if they had more power plants. Finally seem to have clued in on at least that to a little, to some degree. Like, building a solar collector, but I th I'm trying to remember, Steel Blue, I don't recall exactly how they play, but I think they were the kind of player that tried to play with a minimum of power plants. Like, just enough power plants to use their metal. Which makes sense in the first two minutes of the game, but after that, you want to have more power plants because you're trying to, you know, beat your opponent. Okay, it sounds weird. But you're, you are trying to make sure that your power plants are able to actually use up the reclaim that you get. Because if you don't have the power plants to use the reclaim that you get, then you can't use the reclaim, and then it excesses, and then this happens when you're trying to use reclaim in order to make up for a lack of economy. And now Steel Blue throws in the towel, and Randy will be moving on to the winner's finals. And it looks like Still waiting on Super 98 and Mudcraft for the second winner's finals. Or winner's semifinal, rather. So I suppose I might as well check that out. It'd be a little weird because it's, it's a round two match, not a semifinals match, but... Well, the timing's weird, so... Yeah, and I never said I was necessarily going to stream that one. Anyhow, let's check the rest of the bracket. So, so far, the loser bracket match is still going on. Again, Stuart 98 and Madcraft are... Looks like they're finishing up their match. A little unsure what's going on there. Going over 12 minutes on Bandit Plains. I guess we could check it out. Be a little weird, but... Yeah, let's go check it out. See what they're up to. So back to winner's round two, just to deal with this match before the second winner semifinal. Because we kind of need one of these players to win before Golda has someone to play against. Yeah, I got the timing got screwed up because of a DQ in the round one. Anyway, starting out very quickly, we have Cloaky coming in here from Stewart. We have Cloaky from Madcraft, and we have... A lot of raiding coming in from Madcraft. Not really accomplishing all that much. Well, Stuart is just... Now, Stuart is dealing with it reasonably okay. Ooh, never mind. Knight's coming in here from Madcraft, actually presenting a bit of a problem. But Stuart still has solid control over the center of the map. Going for the counterattack, and will at least be able to maintain control over the center. So long as they're able to rebuild some of their southern metal extractors, they will be in a good spot. And they have now re... Well, they haven't rebuilt the metal extractors, but they're still in a relatively decent spot. Same time, Madcraft. Once again, has ended up way behind an economy, although very plate-heavy. Going for mass glaives, which makes sense. While on the other hand, Stuart also getting a plate, which makes sense. Cloak is a factory you would go for plates for. Oh, the gunship switch on top of that. Nothing so far from gunships that... At least is still in play. Stuart 98, with that Western expansion killed, will easily be able to retake this. But again, they have to actually, you know, build stuff here. Ah, they got it sorted. All right. That will work. So, yeah. This is pretty well solid for Stuart. I mean... Madcraft doing what they can, pushing out. Looking at the map right now, Madcraft would probably have to break... I mean, this Stinger would be a good target. They could break this Stinger with slings, maybe. 
then from there they'd be able to take out this hill and then we'd be able to rain down on the center. So far though it looks like the opposite is happening where Madcraft's own stingers, own stinger nest firebase is struggling. I'm running a shield block factory on there though, I'm getting getting some rogues, getting some bandits. Madcraft actually with all the reclaim is well when they have reclaim they're managing to stay on par with Stewart, so that's something. But unfortunately, that's all they really have, and it, they're losing even that. Mad Crash Commander forced to retreat as the Shieldbot Factory looks to be completely dead very shortly. Stinger's down. Stardust will shoot me down. There it goes, thanks to a Phantom. And from here, Madcraft with their Shieldbot Factory is kind of desperately clinging on to life. At the same time, the Northwest, Stewart is wiping out, or working to wipe out what's been built up. Madcraft looking to defend, but unfortunately does not have the sheer firepower to do so. Stewart with a bit of a tactical retreat beforehand. And now, Madcraft realizing they are done. That is it. Throwing in the towel, and Stewart 98 will be moving on to fight Golda as we get back to the semi winner semifinals, rather than this winner's round two detour. So let's get back to that. Yeah, so far we've had a fairly predictable run. I mean, a lot of people have managed to get themselves reasonable games, but still, you know, whoever was higher seeded so far has won, and generally it's been, you know, five minutes in one player just has twice the economy of the other. I mean, I'm kind of surprised we're seeing a lot of maps being played that allow for that. I would think the weaker players would want to play on maps that give them give their opponents fewer opportunities to get a lot of metal extractors. As we can see in the lower brackets, Bakuatsu has beaten RTW Fruity. Ted McFriend and Legomenon still going out, and Bloa has gotten themselves a win on into a fighter. So hey, Bloa got a win! They were wanting to get a win, and they got a win! Good job. Didn't go 0-2. I mean, if you go 0-2, that's fine. The court of the players will go 0-2, mathematically speaking. Don't feel bad if you do. Anyway, we have Stuart and Golda, who will now be going at it. As the two of them are... Where the heck is Golda playing? Okay, I guess Golda got bored and started playing another match. I don't know where they are, though. Doesn't that, doesn't that work? Hmm. Oh, okay, Randy pointing out in the chat that weaker players can only ban four of the ten maps, and three of those are C maps. So the higher seed basically gets to play whatever they want. Okay, that seems odd. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. There there have been complaints already about the map pool, so I I don't really want to weigh in on that. But yeah, C maps are definitely maps that newer players are not gonna want or weaker players are not gonna want to play on just because it is a different game. So I can totally see why that would lead to people basically being stuck in Red Comet, where the stronger player is going to be able to macro them to death. Yeah, that's, that is kind of the thing, and it's... I don't know. It's one of those things where I, I just... I don't like Red Comet. Like I said, I mean, the macro side is fine. It's just more that I really like the... I really like the way that the maps like Banded Plains or Trojan Hills provide, like, high ground advantages and 
they provide some defensible lines and such, whereas Red Comet, I mean, it has some defensible lines, but it's largely just a wide open plane with a few things here and there in the way. So, I don't know. I mean, it's it's one of those things where I just don't... I don't like the map very much. Hmm. Anyway, the, the point is that I... I would kind of hope we see more variety in the maps, just because I think it showcases a broader range of what Zero K is capable of as a game. But I can also see why people would go for it, because it is a fairly simple macro-oriented map that just, allow, just, force, just requires you to build up a bunch of metal extractors and then win. You don't have to worry about terrain mechanics or the way the projectiles work or anything like that. But yeah, as it stands, yeah, I think, okay, I still pointing a map that should be, like, setting up for only three maps available for the higher seated player to pick. Which, yeah, maybe, I can kind of see from what's going on. I think what's happening is that Crow, they mentioned that they were actually, I think they mentioned they were doing Smash Brothers tournaments, not just on Smash GG. I mean, they were doing them on Smash GG, but I think they mentioned something about doing Smash Bros. tournaments. If that's the case, that would explain the rules. Because in Smash Bros, you have, like, about five to ten maps in the base pool, and then it is something like you ban two or three, and then the remainder can be picked by the other player. But the maps in that game, or the levels in that game, are... They're not as polarizing. Like, 0k maps restrict what factories you can play. Very hard. They, they, they put hard caps on what factories you can play. Certain maps you can only really play vehicles, others you can only really play... Spiders and jump bots. Some kind of allow you to play non-spider bots. Of course, the C maps exist, which pretty much force you to play C. And then you have some interesting ones that provide a larger range of options that are usually kind of coastal island maps. But overall, the game is just... It's built around having these... Built around having maps that are very specific to certain factories. But then again, you kind of learn to play multiple factories anyway, I guess, as a result. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to fill time here because we're waiting for the map to be picked. Here we're Stuart and Gorda to sort out what the heck they're trying to do. Oh, oops, I don't want to get there. They were waiting for Stuart and Gorda to sort themselves out. I was currently chatting on Smash GG to try to figure out what's going on. Oh, you're right. Sorry, thanks, Stuart. Stuart pointing out that the bans actually go both ways before the pick happens. Like each player gets chances to ban. Sorry, I was thinking of Rivals of Aether. Yeah, that's my bad. All right, anyhow, we are going to be moving on, and we're going to be on Cobalt Dream, another flat macro map. Although, much less feasty map than Red Comet. I actually still kind of want that, don't I? And, yeah, actually, never mind. No, it's a pretty feasty map. There's there's a ton of metal on this map. Though I do expect that Stewart's going to at least have some chance of getting themselves a reasonable economy going. I don't think I've seen this map played between two players that actually have strong macro skills, or equally strong macro skills. 
It always feels like one player ends up dominating very quickly because they're just better at the macro. Anyway, Goldie one for tanks as a steward. Both players with the tanks. Both... Oh, wait. That was weird. There we go. Both players with tanks because tanks are strong. I'm... St I don't know. I'm sort of thinking about it because it's like, okay, tanks are strong, but it's... You know, it should be... No, tank and rover should at least be both viable on maps like this. If Hovercraft is also viable, that's great. We saw Hovercraft win in Randy's match last time, but then again... That was Randy, so... Yeah. That is kind of how it goes when it's Randy. They, they, just, they are a strong player that way. They can kind of get away with that sort of thing. But with other players, it's hard to tell, you know? It's just sort of how that... I guess they just don't want to risk it. Just go for tanks. Tanks are the safe choice. And Gorda getting a early kill micro. I was getting very early wind generators on top of this hill. Oh, that is clever. Wind generators are... Oops. What? Oh, right. Oh, yeah, they're useful on the hills. They're not really useful otherwise. So, if that's... That's that, then that is something of an advantage to Golda starting out. Definitely with the raid coming in for the Kodachi, absolutely causing an advantage. I mean, that first micro win from Golda is the reason why they're able to come in here and start ripping apart Stewart's base. And honestly, put Stewart in a position where they might actually lose... No, they're not going to lose that quickly. I mean, the factory's taking a lot of damage, and Golda's doing a great job of using field of view... or of using line of sight mechanics. But that factory is not going to die. However, Stewart has been so massively set back as a result of this that I don't know if Golda is going to have to really work for the rest of the game. I think the game is basically theirs now. It is essentially theirs to lose. I... I hate to be so blunt about it, but... Well, honestly, it is. The Goda's got a position right now where they essentially just have to make sure that they don't get outpaced by Stewart, but Stewart's already fallen behind economy-wise. Once a welder is set up and starts building up, then... Well, then Stewart is gonna have really nothing to keep themselves afloat, relatively speaking. Now, there's not a lot of reclaim that's actually come in here that would let them try to catch up. Not to mention already another Kodachi coming in here, because why not? Why not bully Stewart a little bit more? I do like the assist build here on the on the Blitz, though. Gets at least some defenses going on here. Make sure the Kodachis don't have complete free roam over what's what has been the charred remains of Stewart 98's base. Still, it's just trying to keep track of all these Kodachis and stopping them is proving to be extremely difficult. I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing a lot of Kodachis, a lot of tanks, is because Kodachi is such a great raider. I mean, if you had Scorchers in this case, first off, the Welder would actually have a chance to get them, and second, they wouldn't be able to hit and run as easily. And that is the biggest thing. The, the fact that Kodachis can come in, deal a lot of damage, and then leave. Or, well, okay, in this case they die, but for the most part, leave. That is huge. And they're only 50 metal more expensive than a Scorcher. So it might just be that Kodachis are a touch overtuned. And that's why we see them so often. Not really sure what would be changed. I'd, I mean, there's you could make them more expensive, but that would kind of ruin their raiderness. You could make them slower, but that also kind of ruins their raiderness. Maybe just have them deal less damage, maybe? Or have less health. I really have less health. That that'd be the quants rule thing to do. Like drop their health by hundred or so. Make them easier. They're still fast raiders, but they're much easier to kill. Something like that. I don't know. Or reduce fire rate. I mean, granted, what reduce fire rate was what they were before. 
And what they were before was still reasonably strong, if a little bit all or nothing. This is a touch less all or nothing, but it's more weight in the all side. And now, thanks to that rating, Gota has essentially taken their entire half of the map. 36 metal to 13. Stewart desperately trying to rebuild, but of course, every time they've tried, they've lost a bunch of units because they really can't build up enough units to counter the Kodachis, and then they're losing units because the Kodachis. And the Kodachis kill them all. Which isn't ideal. So yeah, that's that's going to be tough to deal with, I'm afraid. Whereas with Gorda, they can just do whatever they want. What they want to do is build an absolute kingdom worth of welders. I don't know why is that a kingdom of welders. I mean, welders are... I mean, the trace people would be more of like a commune of welders. I don't know. Anyway, the point is that there's a lot of welders. And they're going to be just... They're pretty much the entire... The only unit that Golda really has right now is welders. But that's what Golda needs. Just building up a massive economy and then... Turning that into a massive production base. And then using that to just... Spit out minotaurs and ogres and... All the scary tank units. But of course, welders do have the ability to defend themselves. So it's not like Stuart can easily just turn around and start raiding Golda right now. Not to mention, if they do, well, then Gota just has a bunch of caretakers, and, well, that's that. There's not a whole lot that can be done about it. Still, Stewart's trying. Give them that much. They're not taking this line down. They're just going to have to fight extremely hard. If, I don't even know how they're going to be able to do this, honestly. Like, if they have the actual... Like, if they have the assets to do this, I feel like they're just... Falling far behind. I like the micro on the blitz, though. Getting around that welder, not getting killed. But it's just chipping away at Gota, who is rapidly rebuilding. Rebuilding way faster than Stewart can deal with. I mean, if Stewart is able to keep their blitzes all alive over the course of a couple of battles, then I could maybe see it. But they'd have to get rid of all of these defensive structures. And there's a bit of a hole right here. That a unit could take to get around. But with Skoda now getting back into military production, that hole is going to be plugged pretty quickly. Bowloads of Minotaurs coming in here, that's just going to be used to wipe out everything. Like, the Minotaur is going to come in, sweep through, take out the entire base Stuart has built up. Assuming Stuart even stays in the game long enough for that to happen. They might throw in the towel before a Minotaur is even put in their base. The Minotaur will be built first. There already is one, but... The Minotaur might not even reach their base before Stuart realizes they're... They just don't have a lot they can work with here. I mean, they're trying, but their early raid just absolutely wrecked them. And yeah, Stuart... They're trying. They're really trying, but they lost... No, they lost the... They lost the... Blitzes. That's it. They lost Blitzes. They are done. Their only hope is keeping every single Blitz alive, building up a large army out of that, and then... Using that along with the reclaim gain to go in. And yeah, Stuart pointed out the game, as soon as that Kodachi win happened, or Kodachi micro battle happened, that was game. Because Kodachis are that strong a raider. There just isn't anything you can really do about them. That's what I'm saying, maybe lower the health. Make it easier for a Lotus to actually deal with them or something. Because, yeah, 670 HP on a raider, that's as fast as damaging as that one is. Eh, seems like the quant thing to do. But anyway, that is that, so we are going to be moving on to the Winner's Finals after a short break, so stay tuned, and we'll be back with Winner's Finals. See who wins between Randy and Golda. Who'd have thought? Who'd have seen that coming? Anyway, stay tuned. We'll be back in a sec. <laughs> 